Well, welcome again to Empowerment of Faith Kingdom Kingdom Center for Ambassador <laughs> Dr. Larry Renee. We appreciate you so much. I am yours truly, your senior pastor. Dr. Renee is not cold, but assistant pastor. Yeah, he's the real pastor. Uh, anything right. with two heads is a freak of nature. <laughs> As uh, we said, se uh, senior and assistant, uh, along with other developing uh, pastors that's around me. If you didn't know that, you're being developed. You have an in-house ministry to assist us in pastoring the congregation. So that's very important. And uh, also it's very important concerning what we're about to teach. And those on YouTube uh, live, that's where we are now. Make sure you hit that like button. Please do that for me now. Click, hit, click that like button, and that will automatically draw more people to our channel. Y'all don't know that, did you? Me neither. Too. I just recently found out. And also hit that bell and subscribe to our channel and then turn on your notifications. Thereby, when we go on, uh, you will be notified that we are on. Now, we're, we're teaching uh, based on kingdom concepts that we have received from kingdom precepts, and we're dealing with identifying strongholds in relationships. Now, if, you can, if you're taking notes, if you can write or if you can type, I want you to uh, write this word down or uh, just say this word with me, king. 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 All right, and say this word with me, dominion. Dominion. Now, in Genesis, Barashi, <coughs> excuse me, 1 and 26, the father gave man what? Dominion. dominion. He told him to what? Have dominion over the earth, right? right. He, who did he tell to do that? Man, right? So uh, dominion... That's a, a kingdom, uh, when you look at definition of term relating to kingdom, that's going to reveal something else. A king on territory, that territory that king own is their what? Dominion, right? Mm -hmm. So a king is a what? Ruler. All right, he said have dominion and do what with that dominion? Dominion, rule over the earth, right? So the word uh, for a dominion is rada, yes. and the word... Uh, uh, to rule, that's a kingdom definition of term, terms. If, if you catch this, because when you rule something, you rule it as you own it. You govern it. You own it. You govern it. Uh, you manage it, and things of that nature. Y'all with me? Yeah. Okay, we just make some adjustments. We had pyros, by the way, y'all, so we're going to, y'all see different things go on. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, uh, put it in this concept. Let this be in you. Let this precept go in you and be this concept. So relative to the father, a person who is governing or ruling a territory is seen as a king. Because someone asked me, show me where uh, we are kings in the, in the Bible. I said, I can show it to you in the scripture and I can take you to the original language and run it through the concepts mm -hmm. uh, of the kingdom, you know, and you will see it. But if you're coming at me in a, a republic, a democratic a mindset, I'm not going to show you a word. And there, and I can show words where he have made us a kingdom of priests or kings and priests in the scripture. Now, so when you look at that, and that's why I say write it down or say the word king, uh, that's going to be the equivalent of the word rule, to rule. And when you say dominion, that's talking about the territory that the king ruled. So you get ruler or king, and dominion, if you put them together, what you have? King dominion, right? Mm -hmm. King dominion or what? Kingdom. So kingdom is not a cliche. It, it, it's, a, it's a living lifestyle. A kingdom is the, a king's dominion. And we are, man is the king in the earth. The earth is the territory that we are to dominate. Mm -hmm. You see it now? So anytime you hear kingdom terms, kingdom concepts, kingdom precepts, making reference to the king who delegated man as king in the territory of the earth to make the earth just like heaven. Yeah. Two kings can't be in the same place at the same time. This is why the scripture said, the father said, let them have dominion. I'm the king, but long as I'm here, they can't operate as a king because two kings can't dominate the same territory so when he gave us dominion he delegated us as being what a ruler or king over the territory of dominion of earth y'all catching it yeah. all right so let that that's the foundational key in understanding kingdom precepts mm -hmm. okay now one kingdom principle 
is the education principle. And what is that? That is where every kingdom teach the concepts or the precepts and the laws and everything that govern that kingdom. We have to learn that, right? And education is the distribution of what? Knowledge. Training is the what? Disbursement of knowledge. I'm just giving some kingdom principles now. Mm -hmm. So we need to apply these. Look at uh, our educational system in a, a democratic society we live in. We have an education system. They get the kids young, and they're getting them at a young. The government is uh, allocating, allocating, I'm sorry, more money toward free child care so they can get your children earlier to indoctrinate them with the democratic doctrine and the governmental doctrine thereby they can have more control at an earlier age over the people that are being governed. Y'all seeing it? See, and, that's, and the kingdom is the same way. The sooner you get indoctrinated with kingdom precepts, the more we can allow our lives to be governed by the king. Y'all catching it? Yeah. All right. So we're going to uh, talk about, and we always start off doing some type of kingdom precepts, uh, mm -hmm. uh, concepts, principles, so we can understand where we're going. So we're dealing with strongholds, uh, identifying strongholds in relationships. Identifying strongholds in relationships. So uh, Dr. Nay is going to uh, jump in here and go over these first. We're just going to mention these first six, then we're going to deal with them. Let's identify them. It's six of them that we have. Okay? Six of them that we have. Yeah. Six of them that we have. Okay, Are they up? So Y'all see them? Okay, you say it put up. Is it up? Okay, no, all right. The next one. Yeah. All right. Break. Okay, so strongholds to break. That's what we want to talk about. Um, uh, the first one we want Raise to. The first one we want to mention is inability to trust due to past hurts. Um, the next one is confusion of role play. Another stronghold, financial stress. Another one, competition of sex. We'll get into this uh, in a little bit of detail a little bit later. Another one, communication blockages. And then a, the last one, interference of others outside relationships. Y'all see them? Mm -hmm. that, that's just six strong. Now let's read this script before we ask you this question. Uh, and that would be, uh, let's go back one. And here it is. Uh, 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 6. Y'all see it? Yes. Okay, let's read it together. For, For the, the weapons, weapons we fight with, with are not, not fleshly, fleshly, but mighty in Elohim for overthrowing strongholds. Now you're going to identify, are going to let us know what strongholds are in general. Overthrowing what? Reasoning in every high matter, matter that exalt itself, itself against, against the knowledge of Elohim, Elohim taking captive every thought to make it obedient to the Messiah and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is complete. That's the uh, 2009 scripture interpretation there. I like to use it because it gives the original names. All right, so uh, we identify now we got six, right? Mm -hmm. So what are strongholds? Based on what we just read, what are strongholds? Strongholds are what? Some, something that holds your mind strongly. Thoughts? Y'all catching it? Imaginations? All of these occur in the mind. Thoughts, imagination, reasoning, thinking, what I feel, what I think, philosophy, yeah. I ideologies, which is a set of ideas. All right, now, all, all philosophy is what I think, and what does philosophy determine in my life? What, what, what does that determine? The way I live. And philosophy is located in the belief system. Ideals are in the deposited within the what? Belief system. So ideals are the thoughts, original thoughts that we receive, and those are called what? Concepts. The original thoughts, ideals are what? Precepts. When I receive them, they are my concept, and the concepts produce what? Convictions where? In my what? Belief system. So all of those ideals and thoughts in my belief system, when you study those, that's called ideology. Now, all of those ideals and thoughts is in my belief system that I continue to think about is what my, our what? Philosophy. 
and philosophy determine the lifestyle. You see it in there? Yeah. So the strongholds are located in our belief system. And when you talk about the belief system, that's what we, what we call faith. That's where it's developed at in the belief system. Now, the Hebrew word for faith will tell us that faith is not just a word. It's a way of living that's in agreement with the Father's lifestyle that he have already predestined for us to live that we learn by way of the what? The seed of the word getting in us. Is that correct? Yes. So uh, now the English say faith is, means to trust or to have confidence, but there is a separate Hebrew word for trust. There's a separate Hebrew word in the original langu language for confidence. Hebrew word for trust is bathiah, uh, uh, bathah, okay? Spell bet, tet, het. That, that means to trust. So the lifestyle that we live, we do that as a result of us doing what? Trusting and have confidence in him. Mm -hmm. You seeing it? Yeah. So our definition for faith actually, it should, we, it's, it's actually trust or confidence. Mm -hmm. The correct definition of faith is the lifestyle that I live based on the what? The lifestyle that's been predetermined by the word that's in me. You see, so the original language uh, and those letter word meaning will give us the core essence of what's going to produce what we're talking about. And that's, I, I feel that's been missing a lot. And mm -hmm. that's what we've been getting. And those are precepts. You, you seeing it? Yeah. So the concepts we have are actually misconcepts. And we have a misconception. Then that misconception will hold our minds as prisoners. And we have a misunderstanding. Right. So these strongholds are all in there, and that's why we're going after the Holy Spirit led us to go in this particular direction, because if you think strongholds, uh, you know, don't think about some demon or something like that. Think about some contaminants and toxins that's in your belief system where your, what we call faith is cultivated and produced. So I, um, okay. I did not get a chance to put this particular word up for stronghold, uh, but one word is misgob. Mm -hmm. And in the Hebrew, uh, the olive bets, you have mem, shin, and that's, isn't that supposed to be a vav right there? That's a, a noon. Not as a gima. A gima? Yeah, gima bet. Okay, bet. And so uh, just looking at this, just thinking about how um, the mass, this massive spirit that has been consumed and lifted up on the inside of me. What that that's the word for stronghold. This thing that's on the inside of me that's holding me strongly. This is what the Hebrew I mean the Hebrew alabet. Hebrew, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cuz hey, and here it is. Here cuz you get several. When you learn these letter word meaning, it's going to lock several levels. Now check this out. Mem, mm -hmm. spiritual authority, power of the spirit. Mem also mean the life-giving spirit, right? Yes. Or a spirit that's given life to my life mm -hmm. that shin has totally consumed me and that's lifting, and that's, that has lifted up in me. This stronghold is lifted up and it's elevated, and that's the spiritual authority that's controlling me. Right. And where, where is this taking place? Bet on the inside. Yeah. So each stronghold have cover, uh, it, it's, a, it's being in covenant. So when a stronghold get in me, is operating because I agree to it. Mm. See, and that's where you come back with the concept. I agree with that precept. So by me agreeing with it, come on, that, that power or whatever is located in that stronghold is on the inside of me and it consumes me spiritual. Minds are spiritual essence. Yes. It's, not, it's not material. Right. Okay. So that's, I'm glad you brought that up. So that's very, so that'll tell us actually what a stronghold is. And mm -hmm. whatever spirit that have sourced that, that I receive, that's mm -hmm. the source of it. You yeah. understand? That's good. That's the precepts. Because you remember, we, we all have to look at the source of our thoughts. Right. And if it's, a, if, if it's out of darkness, then it's, it's demonic or it's, it's, it's dark in the way of not coming from the light of the word of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's controlling my life. So the way we live is a result of what's controlling me. Strong. There are good strongholds. There are bad strongholds. Right. There are good ideas and thoughts that should hold us and control us, and that there are bad ideas and thoughts that control us that we won't, don't want to control us. Mm -hmm. So you see how now we're dealing with this in what? In relationships, right? Yeah. So you, you seeing it? Yeah. 
Okay, so uh, let's go to this. Um, let's look at the strongholds that are needed. Why we say strongholds are needed. Here's a scripture we get this from. Now we're going to go back, back to the original language, and we're going to look at it. Are we up there, Luke? Uh, Lucas 11:23. Okay, Lucas 11:23. We yes. trying to okay. Go ahead. Got it. You want to read it? Sure. Go ahead. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. You see that? It, it's either over here or over there. So when it comes to knowledge, it's coming from light or it's coming from darkness. Yeah. I don't care what college it is. I don't care what school you in. That knowledge that is coming from light or it's gonna agree with the Messiah's teaching or it's gonna disagree. No, no in betweens, no grades. Go ahead, baby. When, when impure, when an impure spirit comes out of a person, it goes through arid places seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says, "I will return to the house I left." When it arrives, it finds the house swept, clean, and put in order. Then it goes and takes seven other spirits more wicked than itself, and they go in and live there. And the final condition of that person is worse than the first. Y'all see that? All right. So what, what are we getting out of this? What are we getting out of this? He says, uh, when an impure come out, that's, you know what we're talking about, right? An impure spirit is residing in that belief system. You seeing it? That's not, it's, it's a dark thought. It's a dark idea. It's a stronghold of darkness. But when the stronghold is broken and it comes out, here's what we, what you understand, need good stronghold. When it comes out, it's going to go and travel and look for another person's mind to set up camp in. Mm. And if it goes to another person's mind, that, and that person's mind already has strongholds located, because all these demons, these fallen angels, want, all of them want a person to control. And several of them with the same agenda would get in the same person's mind. Because once you get in the mind, and that thought is what receives it, come a concept and produce convictions, that's why people have no problem doing dirty, nasty things that they are doing with, with no remorse about it. But notice he said when it goes out and it don't find rest, it's looking for a mind, a, a, a spirit being that has an open mind that will receive them that's not already packed with other spirits with different agendas. But then he said he'll come back to that person. Okay, and it said it find what he said. I, I know what I'm going back to where I came from. Yeah, this thought wanna it was doing good, had your life messed up, thinking crazy, doing crazy. Man, he was he was he was riding, living good. So he said, I'm gonna go back and return what to the house I left. House, be yet, bet what's on the inside, what I was controlling inside that person. I want to get back in that person's mind and and control them. Then it said when it rides, if it rises, it find a house swept clean and put in order. Because mm -hmm. see, once that strong was overthrown and disconnected and eradicated out of there, now that mind is in order to receive. You seeing it? Mm -hmm. If it goes back and there is nothing there to resist it, it's gonna do the same thing it was doing previously. Yeshua said. A stronger man. A, a, the, if a if a strong if you if you want to bind the strong man, a stronger man have to come in in order to bind that strong man. So if there's a thought there, a thought that's stronger than that mm -hmm. have to come in in order to eradicate it and get it out. But once that stronger thought come in and get it out, then we need to allow that stronger thought to set up and form a stronghold in me that is subtle and connected. You know the scripture when Yeshua said the soul sold the word, and one received the word with gladness, but didn't have no root. That, that precept that came never became that person concept. They never really agreed with that word, even though they uh, initially when they received it, they received it with gladness. However, they did not continue to hear the word. Y'all seeing it? So it never came a part of them. Never got in the belief system. It was just in the head only, head knowledge, mental ascension. So uh, with this in mind, we have to remember, so when we go before the Father and then we ask for forgiveness and, you know, we want to 
not only do that, but we have to change the way we think. So I have to make sure that what I was thinking before, I'm, not, I'm no longer thinking that way because if I continue in that process, I'm gonna continue along that way and I'm gonna continue to do the things that I was doing before. So I have to put something else in, which is his word, which is stronger. That's what he was talking about, that stronghold. His word has to be put in. It says here that it finds the house swept and clean and put in order, but if no word is put in there, just what he just said, What's going to happen when that spirit comes back? It's going to be worse. Like, man, I, I thought I was okay. Now, now we seven times worse. See, that, that's why is now I'm going to shake somebody up, okay. especially my holiness people. It's, it's you have to watch deliverance only ministries Ooh. that have no follow up teaching ministry. Yeah. Go, well, I'm going to go to uh, uh, Sister Cha Cha Church in Night Child. They, they get delivered over there. And then two weeks later, you done did something else and even worse. You, you got delivered. I mean, the power went forth, a stronger force, a stronger thought from the word, or the light went forth and got, that, got you set free or made free. But there was no teaching behind it. Got excited, and each time you go back, you get excited again. You get thrilled. You get motivated. Dance, shout. Still, there is no word residing in you, though. You seeing it? And a lot of people gravitate to ministries like that. They I need to get delivered. But you, you're getting delivered all year long, though. And it's a continual deliverance. This way you have people following certain prophets and following certain people and apostles because they got a delivering ministry. Every time I, I have a problem, I call them. They give me word and get me free. But you know, you know what's happening? That person is going to get worse because they have no word in them. And the scripture said in Marcus 4, when tribulation and persecution come for the word's sake, mm -hmm. they get offended immediately, and they turn back. Right. You seeing it? So for those uh, that go to that conference, I, I, somebody going to get real mad. Woman die out loose. You, you ain't loose yet? Talk a little loud. You ain't loose yet? <laughs> I'm just asking. Woman die out loose. How many times? How many times you got to get loose on the same thing? That's correct. Okay. I mean, why are you going to the same conference every year? I mean, it's just like a, it's a religious ritual now. Right. You understanding this? Yes. Or, or having, depending on someone to prophesy to you because there's no word in you. Yeah. And them demons, they seeing it. They said they in order to receive. And the first crack they give me, all we going back in, we take some other fellas with us now. Mm. And you will see some terrible acts and being committed and things going on uh, right up under, you know, pot, hey, this was a we get into this. We just laid this foundation. This was a situation at the church of the congregation at, at uh, Corinthian. Corinthian. They had a manifestation of uh, the language of fire. They had gifts, man, gift, spiritual gift manifesting and stuff like that. But they also had sons sleeping with their father's wives. Mm. They had incest. They had all kind of, and they was bragging about it. Wow. And it's a church full of power, but yet full of mess. And Sheol came in and began to teach them and tell them about these things. You shouldn't be uh, arrogant about these things. He came in and began to, he didn't have to lay no hands on them. They had enough of that. He came in and started teaching them the word. Read, read Corinthians. I mean, we, we're going to get in it tonight. And, and those responses, those apostolic responses, they would ask a question. He would send a letter back. Every, he just came, he said, listen. Don't do this. Or this way we're going to handle this. And one time he said, y'all think because, you know, I'm about 5'5", five, five, you know, and I'm not real big and strong that I'm weak and you can just run over me. But the authority I got is for you. And just like uh, when, the, when I speak, when I'm absent, you're going to get the same thing when I get there. Ain't no change because they were saying, yeah, 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 he talk big, but, man, he, he ain't about nothing, man. <laughs> yeah, he just talk all that talk, Doc. That's they, that, that what they were saying about him. It's right there. <laughs> okay. So uh, <laughs> we have to understand where we're going, these relationships. Uh, uh, first, we've got to understand the core of the matter and what these strongholds are. Y'all get it now? Mm -hmm. So just going to church is not going to get it. Getting a good message is not going to get it. You're going to have to person be a student of the word and get the word in you. Now, let's go over. Uh, so that's, that's a principle. Strongholds are needed. Mm -hmm. So when them, them demons, when them thoughts them thoughts of darkness come back, they won't find no place in you. You remember Yeshua said the prince of this world coming? Yeah. But he don't have nothing in me? Yeah. Y'all remember that? Mm -hmm. 
that's powerful. He said, let him come. He don't have nothing in me to connect with. And uh, as we get into this, uh, uh, for, before we get in, let's, let's give you, let's go over the word relationship. Relationship. Relationship in the English, one of the means I really like, it means to be able to connect with one another or how we behave toward one another. So we identifying uh, what strongholds or thoughts or ideals that are holding a person strong where in the way that we connect, relate, and behave bet amongst each other. Mm -hmm. So if a stronghold is there, it's there to disconnect. Y'all seeing it? And have us uh, behave in an inappropriate manner toward each other. So people are uh, uh, disrespectful and dishonorable and not uh, treating each other right or not communicating right because of strongholds. You see it in there? That's, that's what's got it messed up. And uh, Renee, anytime you want to jump in, jump in. The core, who we're talking about this, the, the core platform for relationships is communication. That's right. Communication. Y'all catching it? Mm -hmm. So because we have thoughts that is telling us how to communicate that's birthed out of darkness, we're having problems getting along with each other. And here, here is where all relationships is going to come out of in their communication is uh, mishpacha, the Hebrew word for family. You take the Hebrew word for anoint or anointing, you put a pay, which means to speak right there in the middle, and you have the presence of the Father being released in his word upon us. So he released himself on us to be able to relate and communicate to each other. Just like Yeshua said, me and my father, what? One. When you see me, you see the father. If you're against the father, if you're against me, you're against the, if you're against the father, you're against, that, that's what's going to come up in that one about the, fa you know, interference and, and outside stuff. That's, that's where we're going to go there. So okay. let's, let's, move, let's, let's move a little bit, okay? All right, let's move a little bit. All right, come on, uh, Dr. Renee. Okay. I'll do as if you want to turn around. All right. Okay, so. Uh, do we have number one up here? Number one, the inability to trust due to past hurts. That's a strong word. That's the first one. Now, here's, a, here's a, the other idea or thought that we need to make an exchange. You see it? Because you can't kill idea, right? right? You can uproot it, though. But you got to, when you do get rid of that one, you got to get the one we need that'll hold us. Go ahead, Dr. Nay. Okay, so the principle of love forgiveness um, in Marcus oh, you might go for you. 1125 and when you stand praying if you hold anything against anyone forgive them so that your father in heaven may forgive you your sins it, it's simple isn't it yeah. but that's a precept and you know what a lot of five baptized scripture quoting Bible toting uh, believers saints whatever you want to call them are in violation of this principle because people are yet unable to trust because of something that happened in the past. Some people are married that should not be married because they went into a marriage with brokenness and wounds due to them not releasing it. What, what was that uh, you made, you, uh, Spirit of God gave you about not when you uh, don't forgive somebody? Right. When you, uh, when you don't forgive, you're giving the power of unforgiveness, that ability to destroy you. So it was something like that. Um, you know, the, when you don't forgive, that spirit of unforgiveness, that particular spirit has been sent so that you can be devoured. But when you do forgive, you release that spirit of its assignment. Somebody be right, writing that down. Well, I just can't forgive them. That's a stronghold. <laughs> That's a lifestyle as a result of philosophy, which is a result of an idea that I or that person received. That demonic influence told them they cannot forgive and they received that. You understand? It, it's possible to forgive people and uh, don't even be with them. Yeah, you have to Because we don't have to be, I, I think <laughs> that we've gotten things mixed up thinking that because I forgive you, that we have to be intertwined and we have to, you know, talk every day. No, I, I forgive you, 
I'm not trying to hold anything. Uh, I wish you well, um, but I do realize that if I don't release you, I know that the Father, he's not going to forgive anything that I have done. All have fallen short. So we, we know that scripture. So, uh, yeah, I forgive you, and we're good. But we're not having lunch every day. We're not. Don't call me stupid. It seems, though, that <laughs> believers, it's like the believers, they're like, okay, I forgive you. Yeah, okay, just forgive and forget. Okay, we, we understand that, but let's not be dumb about it. Right. If someone steals something from you, you forgive them, right? Right? Yeah, yeah forgive them. But so, I'm not going to let you keep my purse, though. Thank you. But I forgive you. Right. <laughs> you see how simple that is? Listen, he says... Uh, what she was, the scripture said, whosoever sins retain, I retain. Right. So if a person sinned against me, they, they, they sinned against me, committed an act of rebellion against me. They broke something with me, right? But if I don't retain it, what they did, their act is retained to me. So I'm giving that act the power to control me. That's, that's what you're saying, but when you don't forgive someone, you give whatever spirit sent the power to destroy you. And... Uh, it tied the father's hand because he said, if you don't, I can't. Oh, but it was just too bad. Hold it, Cletus. Don't go to the father praying because the door is shut. You shut it. He didn't. He can't release you from the judgment that's upon you because you have elevated yourself above the father. Anything that the Father does that we refuse to do, we'll tell the Father that we are sovereign. I'm in charge. I'm the highest one. I sit high and I look low because I'm going to go, I'm going to do something that you will do, but I choose not to do it. You will forgive, but I'm not going to forgive. You see how terrible that is? That's, that's, that's terrible. So if a person is, you have to be wise. If, a, if you know somebody is, is a thief, they haven't been delivered, you know they lie and keep mess going, okay, they put some mess on you, but you released that, right? But you're not going to come over here and bring your mess. I forgave you, but you don't have permission to bring it here. That means that you have no power to control me. You may use it somewhere else. Now, when you stop and repent, remember, say, if the, if the brother come to you and repent, you forgive him. That person never, they don't even have to repent or change. He said, if you remember that someone got, a, got something going on, leave your gift and you get it straight, make sure you get clean, whether they stop doing what they're doing or not. Now, if they, they just dirty low down and, and raggling, gossip, bucket mouth, keep stuff going, keep mess going. That's why I was saying, er, I choose not to be around people like that. I don't hold nothing against. If, you, even you, if men have done stuff to me, I, I, I have no problem with you, but I'm not coming to your party. I'm not coming to your event. I'm, I don't care what, I'm not coming. I'm not going around a bunch of confusion and mess. I, I, I refuse for that. I refuse for my character, my lifestyle, to give permission or to condone yours. Y'all seeing it? Yeah. So inability to trust due to past hurts, uh, that's, that's, that's bringing a disconnection between people who should be connected because mainly it's dealing with someone who wants you to forgive them and you won't do it. And that has disconnected and severed that what? That relationship or that connection or how we should be that the, the presence of the Father can be manifested. Y'all remember he said, if anyone say uh, he walk in, in, the, in the truth or in light and, and it's not right relationship, go to uh, uh, First John, Yokona. Go to First Yokona. Let's look at this. First Yokona, I believe, is... is uh, Let's just look here. Okay, here, here it is. First Yochanan, uh, one and five. First Yochanan, one and five. Check this out right here. And what Dr. Renee was saying is absolutely right. Absolutely right. You know, you got someone, whether they forgive you or not, you forgive them, but they still operate in that demonic lifestyle. I'm not, I'm not hanging around you. You know, I'm just not going to do it. You know, it, it's just, it's stupidity is what it is. I call it religion, religious. Oh, well, you know, I'm going to go bail him out again. Now he done put your house up and didn't show up for, for his court date and they took your house 
that was given to you by your parents who chop cotton, pick cotton, you know, pluck chickens and shell beans to get it, all that labor that your, your parents went through to get that house, all for some knucklehead boy, you done lost it. Because I forgave him. And you know he was going back out there and doing the same thing. See, Yeshua said, if the strong man knew that the thief was coming, he'll stay up and watch for him. All right, he says, verse 5. You want to read that, baby? Mm -hmm. Oh, I get it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, first Yochanan 1 and 5. There it is right there. Oh, okay. There it is right there. You get it. Mm -hmm. First right. Yochanan 1 and 5. All right, this is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. Elohim is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we, we have, have connection, relationship. You seeing it? I'm not disconnected. You can't disconnect when you're in, we, if, if all of us are in the light, we have connection. If darkness come in, there's a disconnection. You seeing it? But if we walk, come on, baby, we walk in the light. We have fellowship with one another. Wait, but if we walk in the light, verse 7. Yes. But if we walk in the light, as he is as in the light. As he is. You seeing it? So the father, we pattern our relationship after how the father, uh, our Yeshua, the Messiah, Holy Spirit, how their relationship. Yeshua said, when you see me, you see him. You seeing it? Uh, or if you're against him, you're against me. We're getting, we're going to get to that. We're coming back here. He says, he is in the light. Then we have fellowship with one another and the what? Blood of Yeshua, his son, purifies us from all sin. All rebellion, it will cleanse it away. And because we're walking in the light. So if anything, any, any uh, toxins there, and just by fellowship and staying in relationship, it won't be able to fulfill this course. You mean he won't pay me to stay connected? But if you if you stay separate from one another, tripping and assuming, mm. if you got a problem with the brother, <clears throat> go to that brother. Yeah. And if they don't hear you, go still try to restore it. Get somebody who know about the situation. And they still act a monkey. Then he said, call for the elders of the congregation. And let them pray. And y'all get an agreement and come against that spirit of division, that spirit of ignorance. And then Yeshua said, whatever you agree on, whatever you touch and agree on concerning anything on this earth, my father do it for you. He was primarily talking about the restoration of relationships. Let me add this because we're almost out of time. What? D don't, Man, let, that was quick. don't let uh, the lack of a person's apology hold up your healing. Many times we'll say, okay, I, no, he needs to apologize. No, she needs to apologize, and then I'm going to be okay. No, suppose they never apologize. Healing belongs to all of us. So it's for me. It's for you. So don't let that uh, an inability to trust due to past hurts. If that's what you're waiting <clears throat> on, the wait is over. Stop. Had to say it one time tonight. Well, I, I just can't figure out <clears throat> why, why he divorced me or why he didn't like me. That's, that's 30 years ago. Right. And people are still walking around with that state of mind. Yeah. I just want to know why. I just want an explanation. Really. You may not ever get an explanation. You're right. going to have to be able to move on and get past it. Otherwise, it's still a stronghold. It's going to continue to hold you stronger and strongly, and then you won't be able to move forward. And it sounds real, real just sanctimonious, doesn't it? I, I, I just, I forgave him, but I, no, you never forgave him. Because if you, when you forgive somebody, your demands cease. When you forgive somebody, they don't need to tell you nothing. When you release somebody, you don't need an explanation. I've had people start telling us, look, <clears throat> I'm fine. It's good to go. You don't even explain it to me. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just, before you came, I, I'm, I'm, I'm clean of that. Well, well just that because I, I really need to do this for me. I said, oh, well, go ahead then. And I let them do it for them and let them make their confession. And make sure they get it out and, you know, and then. Then you find out if you really did let it go. If right. If they let, say something you don't like. <laughs> let, it, let it go, you know, and go on. I said, okay, all right. I had a person there. He said, I did some nasty, dirty stuff. And I just, I just, you know, and I was in that talk bunch. 
and I, I don't even deserve to say anything toward you about you based on what I've, and, and they went, and then they began to tell me what they was doing. I was able to help them out in those areas. But what I'm saying is that we need to have this in mind. If you are forgiven, you forgiven, and then you didn't forgive it if you still got to talk about it five years from now. Yeah. Well, I just need to get, I thought you, re, okay, how does the father work? What if he got to talk about something that you asked him to forgive you all five years ago? If he got to talk about something, that means he have not forgiven you. And if he haven't, then the devil have had five years of permission to tear your drawers off. <laughs> and we gave it to him. That's why I think. I said, wait a minute. Why we got to talk about that again? Because I'm like this. The father, once he forgive me, I'm forgiven. We don't talk about it anymore. We threw it. You see, and I'm the same way with you. If I'm still bringing something up because I ain't got over it, actually, I never forgave you. It's tough, but it's right. It's just right. Because that, that's a stronghold that we never dealt with. And we say I'm forgiven. We talk and all this and all that. But we don't go get the word in that area and say, let me look at the precept of walking in forgiveness that's tied to love. Well, he said, the precept, the father said, I throw, I throw your sin, I forgive you, and put in the sea of forgiveness. As far as east is from west, and they never meet each other, so have I blotted out your sin. I'm through with it. Now, if I am not more than him, I do the same thing. You see the precept? See, we need the precept zone. Go ahead. Yeah, we, I know it's 45, but, you know, we did 45, right? Yeah, we should do our question. Now we're going to do our Q&A, and that's just one. Mm -hmm. That's just one. That's just one. That's just, we got six of them to deal with, and that's just one. Okay, so we're going to do some Q&A, and prior to doing Q&A, let me uh, do this right, say this right here. If Yeshua said, if you love me, you'll love the Father, right? Now, uh, before we go in our q and A, I I got a, a uh, something I want to present to this new generation. How can you love somebody who hate your daddy? How can you love somebody who hate your mama? How can you go to a function that somebody's having and they running your parents down? You know why you're doing it? Because of ignorance and a lack of knowledge of kingdom precepts and relationships. Yeshua never said well, you got a problem with my father, that's all right, but me and you cool. He never said it. He said, no. If you love my father, you love me. If you love, you can't love the father and not love me. It don't work like that. And we got families right now, I know it, where you got the, the people got a problem with this person's dad or with their mama, but they, they, they buddy buddy. And y'all fellowship with them. You go over the house, you go to the, oh, well, they ain't got nothing to do with it. That's mom and dad. They ain't got nothing to do with me. Oh, that's my cousin. They ain't got nothing to do with me. But when your butt get broke, who you come to? And when you need something, who you come to? <laughs> I wasn't raised like that. If you said something about my mama, you play the doves, we fighting to the death. And I'm not. I've heard of playing the dozen until and I'm I not, met you. <laughs> she's never heard of it. And it wasn't real? That and nowadays, the see, we had some honor left. And these days, you have very little honor for mothers and fathers. Very, and we're going to get into that one day. Very, very little. And I'd be watching stuff, and I'd be saying, I don't know, that's my son, that's my daughter, and, but I'm watching who they're around. And I'm not going to, I'm not, you know, don't be shocked when your name not on something. Because you got an Esau spirit. You have no value. Okay, question now. So let's do this thing. Kirene, we'll repeat your question because uh, we still teaching. We're going to do this. Let's go. Okay, my question is. Uh, I'll repeat your question. Yeah, don't want to say we're going to repeat the question. It's going to take a minute for me to get it out. It's going to take a minute. <laughs> Okay. Take, well, okay, take the so mic over there, and then you can talk right now. Yes, all right. Thank and you. then y'all just get your whole question out. Then we're going to respond to it. So just address us. You know, you don't have to say mom or dad or nothing like that. Let me see. 
And anytime we need to go off YouTube, we will, but I want the viewer to get at least some of this. Some of it, okay? And then we'll, we'll talk loud into this particular one and you can pick it up if you like, okay? All right, now here's a question. It's going to come again. How's that time? But this is still good, good, good. Go ahead. Okay, the question is, um, I know that it's been taught that some people have just been placed in your life for you to minister to them or get them saved or whatever and not necessarily to be in relationship with them. So basically, how do you identify um, the relationships where you're still supposed to be connected versus ones like the season's over, you know, it's okay to let them go? Okay, that's a very good question. Uh, I can, I remember particularly when I was speaking of that, uh, more so concerning male female relationships. Um, I want to say because many times when the male and female relationship, you know, when you're trying to minister, uh, it was your job to lead him to Christ, not to the bedroom. So that that was the uh, vein that I was in because I remember that. So basically, you were just saying, um, how do you know when it, the season is over or not? So it's going to take your uh, it's going to take your maturity in the word to know who are you supposed to be connected, intertwined to, how many how how much time you're going to invest in that person, um, and that's going to come with your growth and your ability to hear what the Father is telling you to do. You know, when you're in tune to him, he'll show you, he'll give you direction. He'll show you who to pour into. He'll show you if the person's even ready to receive what you have. That's one thing that I had to learn because I wanted it more than that person. But if the person who's receiving that seed can't handle the seed, I may as well just throw the seed out the window because it's not going anywhere. Would you want to add something to that? Yeah, I'm just going to give some scriptural um, a foundation on it. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> uh, one plant the seed, yeah. one water, but Elohim get an increase. Now, th the problem is, as many times we try to sow the seed, do the water, and do the increase. Yeah. It don't work like that. <laughs> it don't work like that. You plant your seed and keep moving. Or you go water a seed that's been planted, but none of us give the increase. None of us give the increase on that. That was... Uh, uh, that's one uh, particular uh, principle in the scripture that we ne really need to pay attention to. And the scripture says that a uh, friend of the world is an em enemy of Elohim. And, but then Sheol says that if you come out of the world system, then you won't have, how are you going to bring people out and you separate from them? So in general, we are light to everybody. Right. And let me add this also. If the person's intentions are not pure, They'll remove themselves. They're not going to want to receive what you have to say. Oh, you're judging me. Oh, why you got to be so holy? Oh, you, it's, I mean, you'll know when it's time to separate. Because if that person really don't want to change, if that person uh, don't have that mindset to hear the word, things like that, you'll know if that's, you know, if, okay, my time, okay, I've done what I need to do. I planted that seed. And that person, they need to be able to make that exchange. But if they're not at that point, I mean, uh, certain things that I see when I see certain people post certain things, I basically can tell where they are. So because of the word level that we're getting, the kingdom message that we're getting, so then you'll know unless you just want to pick a fight or something, you know, unless yeah. you're instigated like him. <coughs> and with that also, we have to watch it because abuse Emotional abuse, one of the things about emotional abuse <coughs> is that you trying to be accepted by someone who is rejecting you. Yeah. And that and that pride come in, you want them to accept you and you want them to, to do this and you and you being rejected and you'll go after someone you should you should be walking away from. Someone else have that to deal with them. You have done your part. So I have to really cause in uh, physical abusive relationships you know, uh, that wife is trying to figure out why is her husband rejecting her and he won't, she want him to accept her so she put up with the abuse. So you can be in abuse relationships and we, we can't play Yah. We're not Elohim. We're not Holy Spirit. We can't save nobody. Okay? We, he want them to be saved. But at the same time, how do he deal with it? 
whosoever is willing. If the person's will is not in that area, then you can't force it to go that way. And if you, all of us are exposed to different people, all of us are walking in light, and that light needs to shine in darkness. But if, like Dr. Renee was saying, the light is to shine, the light, and, the, and if that person is rejecting the knowledge, like he said, my people destroy for a lack of knowledge, he, and the word said, because you reject knowledge, I'm going to reject you and your kids. So we, we, we stop playing Elohim and just do what we need to be doing. Here's a, a one a pastor told me this. He said, listen, people who don't want to hear you, they're not committed, <clears throat> and you're pouring into them, and they the one uh, that you get the less response from, they don't appreciate you. He said, listen, if you spend too much time on that, you're going to miss those who are right around you who do love you. So when it comes to love, we don't look for love in those type of relationships or love to come back to us. We just do what we do and make sure that we let the light shine. And those that are around us love on the people that's loving you back. And I know, I, I heard the religious folk, where Yeshua said, you, you don't, you're supposed to love people who don't. And you supposed to, see, that English translation messing us up. It's messing us up. Uh, if, here's a prodigal, a prodigal son. What happened? The son that was there all the time started tripping when the father, the other son came back. Did he not? So he started, you know, looking at him and, and, and just looking over the fact that he there all the time getting everything the father got. And then had a problem when the son came back. Y'all seeing it? Because he was failing to receive and recognize what he had with his father at that time. You know, another question? Yes. Let's get the other one. That, that was a good one because, you know, everybody want to see everybody save and do well and stuff like that. But you got to be able to discern and, and, and be intentional in what you do. All right, go with this one here. Okay, um, you kind of answer some of my question but my question is what about when you've done somebody wrong mm -hmm. and you feel that need to make amends um can that also be a stronghold in your life i know exactly what you're saying you you've done and the scripture say you know you go and try to make amends right you know uh, and he, he talks about at least the jail will come and put you in bondage and stuff like that he was actually talking about other strongholds giving permission uh to come into your life and operate but if you have done something wrong to someone and they are not receiving you coming to them mm -hmm. yeah. and, and and you know and we're trying to make it right but they just and then they'll then this guilt will come back man i just feel so bad i'm trying my best you know i just i just feel terrible for what i did and 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 they're not receiving it i'm just gonna keep and you want to just keep going and keep going because you want them to receive uh your apology and want them to forgive you you know but they are rejecting it that's where it's, get, it's going into abuse, you see, because Yeshua is like this. If you, he said, if, if whosoever will come to me, you know, and I, I won't cast them out, you know, of a contract and on my heart. I won't cast them out, you know, and the person who was uh, a turnover to a reprobate mind was that person that, that rejected. Then he said that, you know, he says, impossible to pray for someone who have tasted the word, you know, of the powers of the age to come if they turn and crucify the son of Elohim afresh and count the blood of the covenant a common thing. They're rejecting. They're rejecting. They're rejecting. He said, listen, you can't do nothing with that. The judgment is there for them. But guilt will come in and have you feeling so bad because what you did and they'll blame what they're going through on you. Those are all tricks of the enemy. That's an open enemy playing tricks on your mind. And you have to get over that. You you know that the Father has forgiven you. We have and then we got to forgive ourselves or go into that cycle of abuse. And people will use that to control you. They messed up and they want to use that to control you. I've had that happen and I've wanted so bad for that person to do so much better, but they just they just they just got their cotton picking mind made up that they're gonna be like this, and I had to learn. Because I went back to the word and see how, do, how does the father handle this. He did it to the green, they'll do it to the dry. When he did it to Yeshua, what did he do? He even lifted up his eyes when he was about to uh, give up his spirit. He, and he looked at uh, uh, Miriam. He said, there are your sons. You know, I'm getting ready to go. They'll take care of you. They got this thing. You know, and the people who are around him doing all that stuff, he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. 
you know, and I, I know I know the, the plan that we have ahead. So I'm not I'm not going to be tripping on that. He was able to stay focused. You know, so people would do that. They, how, how they be so happy? They did this to me. Are they going on? And I'm still so and so, so and so, because you chose to be like that. Now that stronghold want to come over into your system, and least you know, scripture said, don't be like Esau after he had did something, and then he was crying out to change it, and uh, he said, don't least a, a root of bitterness spring up in you and defile many. You seeing it? We don't want that to spread. Okay, we got another question. Come on uh, with this other question. Did we, did we Hamlet, you had something you want to give on that? Mm. Okay. Uh-oh. I thought somebody, is that it for the question? Someone else have a question? Did you raise your hand? Oh, that was Byron raising his hand. You had a question? He, I he saw you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You want to know when you can have some more pieces? Not now, Byron. Okay. <laughs> no. Huh? Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, you were Yeah, we can do it while we're fellowshipping if we yeah, need to. Yeah. Okay, so um, we appreciate those. Um, if uh, YouTube Live, if you, I mean, you know, if you're on YouTube, you had a question and stuff, you want to send it, if, it's, if, if, if you want to send it, you can always go to our, our website or you can go on our Facebook page uh, and send your question. You can do it that way if you so choose, or you can make a comment on YouTube and, and uh, post your question. Now, we got five more strongholds that we need to, you know, overthrow, right? And show how to get rid of it. And at the same time, put the right stuff in, right? So the enemy won't be able to come back and do the same thing over and over and over again. That's what's going on and get worse and worse and worse, okay? All right, Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We speak shalom over everyone uh, that's under the sound of our voices that are hearing us now. And we are believing that the best will manifest in your life, that you'll be able to receive kingdom precepts to be able to reconnect and to be able to know how to behave and how uh, to, co- to relate to different ones that's in your inner circle and those that's around your surroundings. And Father, we thank you for that manifesting for them. We curse every bacteria, every germ, every sickness, every disease, every spirit of infirmity, anything that will come in and try to uh, 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 deter or hinder a wholeness in our lives. And we thank you for it, Father, it being manifested, the answers coming forth, light coming forth. And we all say amen. Amen. All right. Bless you much.